Hi, I'm Dr. David Roberts, and today we're filming a video on manually taking blood pressure for your patient. Blood pressure is one of the four cardinal vital signs, temperature, pulse, respiration, and blood pressure. Blood pressure is important to be able to take accurately on each patient. For some patients, we might be following their hypertensive conditions. We might be tracking their blood pressure to see if medication or therapy is improving or if it's not working. We may want to assess blood pressure when the patient is acutely ill, such as in an acute viral or bacterial infection, or has complained of recent signs and symptoms, such as feeling weak or fainting. So learning how to take blood pressure is truly one of your vital skills. To begin taking blood pressure, we always want to first begin with good patient care basics. We always want to perform good hand hygiene and practice good patient interaction by identifying ourselves and identifying our patient. We've already practiced good hygiene before we begin our skills today, and we'll go ahead and identify our patient and greet our patient. Hi, I'm Dr. David Roberts. I'll be helping take care of you today. Hello. Um, may I have your last name and date of birth, please? Uh, last name is Morgan Tutin. Date of birth is 9-15-1974. Thank you so much. We're going to take your blood pressure now as part of your vital signs to help track your blood pressure condition. Is it okay if I touch your arm? Yes. Thank you so much. So we always begin by identifying ourselves and the skill we're going to do, and then identifying our patient to make sure we have the right patient for our care at the right time. We always want to ask permission to touch so that we are respectful of the patient and respectful of the patient's comfort and of their boundaries, and let them know that they can trust us as well. To begin taking blood pressure, you want to make sure first you have the proper equipment. We always need a stethoscope to hear the patient's pulse sounds, and we also need a blood pressure cuff with a pressure meter attached called a sphygmomanometer. With this equipment, this is what we need to manually take our blood pressure for our patient. Once we make sure we have the proper equipment, we want to make sure our patient is positioned properly. For most average healthy patients and most conditions, the best position is when the patient is seated with their back supported by a chair and both feet are flat on the floor. If a patient crosses their legs and pushes the muscles of the lower leg against the bones of their other leg, it can obstruct or occlude the blood flow moving from the lower extremity back to the heart and change the blood pressure me measurement and give an erroneous or a false reading. So we always make sure the patient is seated upright and that the feet are flat on the floor. We also want to position the arm at heart level as much as we can to get the most accurate blood pressure reading. To make sure we accurately take blood pressure, you need to next select the correct cuff size. When you open your blood pressure cuff, most blood pressure cuffs are equipped with a range finder marking, and this is going to help you determine if you have the right cuff size for the patient's anatomic arm size. Once you've identified the range markings on your blood pressure cuff, you also want to find the index edge or the index line on your blood pressure cuff, usually as a solid white line just above the Velcro attachments. This is what you're going to use to measure the arm. The correct procedure is going to be making sure that we place the cuff under the patient's arm, and if possible, you want to make sure that you elevate the clothing up the arm to expose the arm fully. You have to be careful that if you push the clothing up too far, it could act as a tourniquet in a way and tighten the blood vessels and the vascular flow in the upper arm, giving you another chance for a false high reading. So if the clothing is going to become too tight on the arm, you may just want to pull it down and go through the thin clothing. In this case, moving the clothing up is going to tighten the arm and the clothing is so thin, we're going to go ahead and move it down and leave it in position here. Because of the thin fabric, it should be okay to correctly hear and auscultate the pulse pressure sounds. When we face our cuff here to the patient, we're going to first find the arterial marker. This is the marker that should be lined up correctly with the patient's brachial artery. You can use two fingers to palpate the brachial artery just above the medial edge of the elbow and the olecranon process and the condyle. We place our artery marker in position, and then we use our edges to determine if the cuff size is appropriate. If I wrap the cuff around the patient's arm, 
and the white edge falls within that range marker on the blood pressure cuff, we've chosen the correct size. If my white line falls outside the marking guidelines, the cuff size is going to be too small for that patient. If my cuff marker falls in front of or before the range marker lines, I've chosen a cuff that is too large for that patient. Either way, too small or too large could throw off your blood pressure measurements. So lining up the artery marker, we've chosen the correct cuff size, and now we've positioned our sphygmomanometer and the patient's cuff and the patient's arm in the correct position. The next thing we want to determine is how we correctly measure our systolic and diastolic blood pressure. A common students, many, a common question many students ask is how much pressure do I pump into the blood pressure cuff before I know I should start hearing sounds or start taking the blood pressure correctly? The correct procedure to know how you're going to tailor the blood pressure for each patient is to correctly find the radial pulse down in the wrist. The radial pulse is located over the radius bone on the thumb side of the forearm. You take your first two fingers, the index and middle fingers, and gently palpate for the radial pulse. Once you've acquired a good radial pulse, you're going to pump up the blood pressure cuff, watching for the millimeters of mercury, and you're going to continue putting pressure into the bulb until you feel the radial pulse go away and vanish. And in this instance, that was right at 150 millimeters of mercury. Using the radial pulse to determine how high I should pump the pressure in my blood pressure cuff is something called the pulse obliteration pressure or the pulse obliterance pressure. To obliterate means to take away. So by using the patient's radial pulse, pumping my blood pressure meter, until I feel this radial pulse vanish and go away, that's how I know that's the number I need to pump the blood pressure cuff to and in correctly inflate the pressure. So, knowing now that I need to pump my blood pressure cuff to at least 150 millimeters of mercury on the dial, I'm ready to begin taking my blood pressure. We're going to correctly position the, the diaphragm of the stethoscope over the patient's brachial artery, very near the antecubital space. And we're going to first pump up our blood pressure cuff to 150 millimeters of mercury for our patient today. Using the dial, you want to slowly let your pressure out about two to three millimeters of mercury per pulse. The first sound you hear is going to be your systolic sound. And the last sound you hear is going to be your diastolic sound. Remove your cuff from your patient and make sure that it is fully deflated. At this point, you would document the patient's blood pressure correctly in either your digital or manual charting system and compare it against previous readings. Also, don't forget to thank your patient for participating in the procedure and allowing them to participate in their health care. Thank you so much for your blood pressure reading. We're going to record that and then we'll give these results to your provider and they'll be in with you shortly. Okay, thank you. Those are the basic techniques of taking a manual blood pressure. Practicing blood pressure is one of the most important things a medical assistant student can do as it's one of the true vital signs that we take on each patient to assess their condition. Remember all the good component parts, good patient care, hand hygiene, correct cuff size, positioning the patient correctly, how to find the pulse obliteration pressure to accurately measure your blood pressure. Keep practicing, good luck, and remember, for your patients, you are the future of the heart of healthcare. Till next time.